Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm not really talking about how to make an automatic speech recognition, but uh, more how we intend to apply automatic speech recognition in the field of subtitling, uh, especially for uh, television. So my name is John Linder. I'm working for Swiss Text, which is more or less a homonym of SwissTech.org. And that's only also a reason why we are um, one of the sponsors of um, this uh, event here. So Swiss Text is a Swiss company. Uh, it's a public limited company of the public broadcaster SAG SSR. Uh, we have four sites in Switzerland. The main quarter is in Biel. This, this is at the language border between the Swiss-speaking and the French-speaking region in Switzerland. We are a multi-language uh, company um, since we are providing subtitles in German, French and uh, Italian and also some in Romance for Romance programs. Uh, our main focus is editing, uh, convert and distribute audiovisual content for the public uh, broadcaster SAG SSR. So first, what are access services and especially for whom? They should or they must enable people with sensory disabilities to access audiovisual content. Uh, this is a law also in Switzerland that uh, audiovisual content has to be accessible for people with sensor sensory uh, disabilities. And this is also due to the fact that Switzerland has signed the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, I think six years ago. And meanwhile, this is law in Switzerland. But there are also other reasons why uh, the programs must be accessible, because uh, the main reason, uh, no, more and more important becomes the fact that due to, or thanks to, to uh, access services, um, the contents get additional viewers, especially uh, subtitles on mobile devices and it's also good for archive purposes because thanks to to the subtitles it's much easier to find the contents in the big media archives so what kind of access services exist the most important one is still subtitling. This is mainly for hard of hearing people. In Switzerland, about 80,000 people who suffer from uh, hard of hearing, so they're not able to follow a, a converse conversation in a noisy environment. There are also signed programs, so with sign language. This is mainly for the deaf community. There are about 8,000 uh, deaf people in Switzerland. There is auto description, which enables the blind people to access mainly um, fictional content. And there are also two other subtitles, uh, two other access services, which do not exist in uh, Switzerland, but I nevertheless wanted to add them here. There are audio subtitles. Uh, this is a service for people without foreign language skills and dyslexia. So imagine you are in, 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 in Denmark, you are viewing, um, you are following uh, an American series, which in, in, in Denmark is, is, is normally not dubbed like here. Uh, it's subtitled in, in, in Danish, so you hear the English voice, you, re you have the Danish subtitles, but if you suffer from dyslexia and you don't know English, you have a problem, and that's why the Danish public broadcaster, for instance, offers audio subtitles, which is more or less uh, speech synthesis that comes out of 
the subtitles on a separate audio channel. And there is also content in simplified languages um, for people who, su who suffer um, with a, who have a mental uh, disability. Um, I mentioned all these, um, these um, services because I'm quite sure that in, in a few years, thanks to, to uh, artificial intelligence, we, we, we will get mu mu much more uh, content thanks to uh, artificial um, in intelligence. Now, uh, as I said, subtitling is the most important access services. We provide subtitles for more than uh, 35 uh, years. Um, we, last year we produced about 30,000 hours uh, on seven TV channels in three languages. We have a staff of more 100 people. So you can imagine it's a, it's a massive workload um, uh, just for, for the hard of hearing uh, community. The subtitles so far are created by editing on a keyboard um, for mainly for pre-recorded content or it is re-spoken for live content. We use actually Dragon 15 Group, which means if you have a, a football match, um, there is someone, uh, there are two persons in the studio that follow, reformulate the comment of the journalist with uh, the punctuation, of course, so they always say full stop at the end of a, of a, of a sentence. Uh, this text is automatically um, uh, converted into, into text, uh, which is immediately broadcast. And if there are massive mistakes, they are also uh, corrected immediately by the other person. So uh, the main challenge is, is how can we increase the subtitling quota on television, which is actually 65%, um, and on other media dis distribution channels, mainly um, uh, p television more and more produce so-called web-only content, which is not, not distributed on the TV channel, but only on, on the website. And how can we keep costs under control? Because uh, you have to know that it takes 10 working hours to subtitle just one hour of content. So it's really a, a, a massive work to create <coughs> subtitles in the, in the classic way. And that's why we thought uh, to use automatic speech recognition uh, in, in the future, to, to mainly to drop costs. First, we have to know what makes a, a good subtitle. Because um, subtitles are not, a time code, not just a time code transcription. Uh, subtitles have to be in sync. It's clear uh, when someone speaks, uh, the, the subtitles have to appear uh, on the screen in the, in the right moment. They don't have to exceed a certain reading speed. This is also due to the fact um, that uh, people with hearing disabilities also often have reading disabilities. Uh, especially the, the deaf people. Deaf people have severe problems to read. And that's why we do, do don't exceed a certain reading speed. But on the other hand, we also uh, mustn't drop below a minimum du the minimum duration. So imagine a subtitle content has only a no, um, which would mean that it's just for a very short time on the screen. 
you wouldn't be able to read. So there has to be a minimum duration for short, short words. We have to decomplex nested sentences um, because uh, th three captions after you, you, you won't remember what was on the, on the subtitle before. We have to avoid metaphors because especially deaf people, um, they have problems really to understand uh, metaphors. And very important, we have to indicate spe speaker changes. Um, so if you look at the content and you read the subtitles, it's, it's, it's very easy for you to detect uh, speaker changes. But if you, if you don't hear the voice, uh, we re you really have to indicate the speaker changes. So it's a cost intensive uh, work. Uh, and since speech recognition becomes more better and better, uh, we really have to use this technology to create uh, subtitles. Um, certainly, you, 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 have, you have detected that on, on YouTube, uh, most of the content, meanwhile, is, uh, auto, is, is, is subtitles, mainly with automatic speech uh, recognition. Um, but I have to say that um, even though the, the, the Google uh, uh, speech recognition is very good, uh, the contents remain mainly incomprehensible. Just do a test yourself. Go on, on YouTube, just choose a, a content and, and, and put off the, the, the voice. Just follow the, the, the subtitles. You won't under, really understand what, what is said. And that's not acceptable for a public broadcaster and therefore not a solution for us. Uh, so, for the, 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 the solution for us is that we use automatic speech recognition with post-editing, which means we use it only for pre-recorded content and then do a post-editing so someone really uh, corrects the mistake. And we call this, this RACU uh, using the French uh, meaning reconnaissance automatique avec correction ultérieure. So, automatic speech recognition with post um, editing. And that's how we proceeded. The base was our workflow system Media Hub, which we use also for other purposes, mainly to distribute audiovisual content. Uh, and this workflow system has the ability to integrate any speech recognition engine. Um, as I told before, we have se se several languages that we, uh, in which we, 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 we subtitle, so mainly German, French, and uh, e Italian. And so we have to integrate um, speech recognitions in all these uh, languages. Uh, and meanwhile, there are very, very good suppliers that offer uh, speech recognition and most of them are meanwhile also on our workflow system because we got licenses. And then the, the I think the, ma the, ma the most important task for us was how to get a fast and simplified editing process. Um, we thought about that uh, and we came to the conclusion that at the end we have to accept that the quality, might, the quality of the subtitles might drop slightly compared with the, the, the subtitles we create um, actually. So how are the subtitles created from uh, automatic speech recognition? Uh, the video is uploaded, up, uploaded. Uh, then the text is recognized from the sound of uh, the video and the text is divided into chunks, so into, into captions. These are mainly, the, the text is 
um, is in, in, in subtitling content mainly on two lines with 35 characters uh, per line. Now our main idea was that the, the correction has to be made on the text level, so not on the subtitling level. So the, the corrections are made before the, the, the text is divided into, into chunks, into subtitles. Um, and then the, the subtitles are divided by uh, an algorithm and it's very important for us that we, uh, we uh, apply this uh, and, and monitor also the subtitles and then try to improve the algorithm so that the, 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 the uh, subtitles get better and better. The advantages are that the corrector can focus on the text and it doesn't have to be really a subtitler because it takes about three months until you really can, can produce good uh, subtitles on a, on a classical subtitling um, uh, software. Um, the person won't be distracted by formatting issues. It so, because it, the person uh, focuses only on uh, the, the text, the process has to be faster and it's mainly it's more fl flexible because <clears throat> you even don't have to have a, a subtitling software. The only thing you need is a, is a browser. The disadvantages are that uh, we lose a certain autonomy um, over the formatting which sometimes can be useful and we also lose a certain auto autonomy on, on, on duration because the, the program will determine himself or itself how the, the subtitles um, are uh, created. And that's how it looks like. This is just a, 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 an audiovisual uh, content. And so you won't see subtitles anymore. You just see text that you um, correct. Uh, as I said, because it is made, the, the, the correction is made before the separation um, of the subtitles. And we created the, 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 the software in this way that it, it's, it's really easily comprehensible, which means uh, you see the black and the gray text. The black one is the one that is already uh, is corrected and the gray one is the one that still has to be um, corrected. So, and somewhat, sometimes you have punctuation but mostly not, so the corrector also have to put in, to put in the points, the full stops and uh, the commas. Uh, and the, 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 the good thing is, so imagine you are here, you, you have corrected almost uh, everything and you detect that this word uh, might be, you, you, you have not read uh, detected, so it, 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 it's wrong. You can easily go back, click here, and then also the, the video will go at the, at the point where, um, and you can re-listen um, if, if it's really um, uh, wrong pron pronounce or if you ha really have done um, uh, a mistake. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm uh, coming to the conclusion. Thank you very much. So we are currently uh, in an intense test period especially uh, with external people because we want to know do they really understand. Uh, this this um, um, application, how do they deal with uh, the editor? What can, we, what can we improve in the division of the subtitles in order to increase the readability? This is the main important point, I think. Um, how can the media hub be integrated in our existing, existing system? 
and what kind of content is most appropriate for this kind of subtitle creation. Uh, I am aware that uh, it won't be apl apl applicable for live content uh, nor for fictional content, so uh, it's, it's only a solution for a part of the TV program. Uh, also, uh, for the moment, it won't be, it won't be possible to use uh, Swiss German. Um, so the, the thing you told that uh, for, the, for the content research you do uh, could be very interesting for us in the future as well. And I think just to have an outlook, how could, how could translation engines be integrated in the system? I think this is a, 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 an issue that uh, will be interesting in the future, uh, mainly because televisions also want that people with other languages can follow their content. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, so you explained that the people said the food stop commas and so on. What about other formatting steps like numbers, hyphens, moving guards, and so on? Um, in, in fact, <laughs> the, the problem with the numbers is, 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 uh, is important and we haven't yet found a, a, a solution. Maybe I think we just have to determine how it has to be because uh, normally we use the, we, we write the, the, the numbers until 12 and from 12 on we use the, we use the numbers but any recognition engine is different. Could, could, could you speak up a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering whether you can also provide a solution for report function text analysis on videos that is using the subtitles and very, you know, clean version of the text. Because uh, as you say, the subtitles are pathetic and don't know, they're not always in the best uh, shape or format for the, you know, text processing. So I was wondering whether we can also You mean, uh, if you could use the subtitles we already have done to improve any other content? Uh, yes, uh, well, I have to say that the, so our subtitles are owned by the broadcaster, and I'm actually in a process uh, to discuss with them this, this issue. So, in fact, uh, the public broadcaster has the principle to make at disposal the contents they have. But uh, the exact conditions under how uh, the contents will be available, I cannot answer you because this is a. I cannot, I cannot decide. Yeah, sure. But you know, this is a, like a commercial opportunity because there are people yeah. who want, you know, I can give you some videos and you provide these clean subtitles. And then, you know, I can give you the video and you can pay for that. In fact. Ah, yeah, so, so, yeah, 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 in fact, first we want to use it ourselves, uh, and, and then, uh, if it really works, uh, in fact, we want to go on, on, on the market, but it's, we're, we're not still there. Okay. Other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah. So you integrated several ASR engines. Yep. Comment on which one is the best for each language? Um, I think it depends on, on, on the content, but um, you can ask me this uh, in, in, in autumn, then we have more um, experience. Okay. But the, the, meanwhile, really, there are very good uh, re recognition engines on the, on the market. Like for, for, for me, fr French is a, is, is, a, is a difficult language, uh, but the, the one from Vocapia, just an example, is, is brilliant. Yeah, so, so you said that um, you uh, are not going to apply that to fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, why not? Why, why um, because fiction.
fiction so far, the, the, the subtitles of fiction are uh, too complex. And there it's really important that you really, um, uh, that you follow the, the subtitling rules. For instance, uh, in fiction programs, color indicates the speakers. So you also would have to, to recognize the, the voices. Uh, and in addition, for fictional content, descriptions are also very important. So if, just to give you an example, if you hear some, someone running but you cannot see it on the screen, you have to describe this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.